Once upon a time, in the vast savannah, there were two giraffes named George and Grace. Both of them were immensely proud of their long necks and often stretched them high into the sky, touching the treetops. One day, a playful bird sitting on a branch commented, I wonder who's taller, George or Grace? That innocent remark sparked a fierce competition between the two giraffes. They started looking for ways to prove their height. George would find the highest mound and stand on it, while Grace would tiptoe on her slender legs, stretching her neck to its utmost limit. To enhance their height, they began pulling down trees and stacking them to stand on. They'd borrow the stones from the ostrich's nest and pile them beneath their feet. They even tried to fluff up their manes and tails for that extra bit of height. The other animals in the savannah soon grew frustrated with the chaos the giraffes were causing. The trees they loved to lounge under were getting knocked down and their paths were filled with stacks of logs and stones. The lion, Leo, said, This competition of theirs is disturbing our peace. And the zebras zipping around the obstacles echoed, It's a menace! Finally, a wise old elephant named Ella decided to intervene. She called George and Grace for a meeting at the great baobab tree. Both of you are unique and beautiful in your own ways. This competition of yours is causing distress to everyone. George looked down, a little embarrassed, and said, I just wanted to be the tallest. Grace nodded in agreement. So did I. Ella continued. Being tall might be a giraffe's pride, but being kind and considerate is far more admirable. The two giraffes took a moment to reflect. They realised that their competition had not only disturbed their friends, but also affected their friendship. They both apologised to each other and to the other animals. So, dear listener, George and Grace learned a valuable lesson that day. They realised that true greatness comes not from being the tallest, biggest or the best, but from being kind, considerate and compassionate. Good night, little dreamer. As the stars twinkle above, May you always remember the story of the two giraffes who found that the size of one's heart is more important than the length of one's neck. Sleep tight, little one. May your dreams be as vast as the savannah. Once upon a time, in a quaint town with red-roofed houses, winding streams and playful children's laughter echoing, a young girl named Chloe loved to bring her imagination to life through her drawings.
One day, while exploring the attic secrets, Chloe stumbled upon a mysterious paintbrush wrapped in silvery cloth. The instant she touched it, she felt an undeniable magic surge through her. With the paintbrush, Chloe drew a little sparrow, and to her amazement, it fluttered to life, singing a cheerful tune. Realizing its potential, she decided to bring joy to her family in unique ways. One morning, noticing her mum's tiredness, from endless chores, Chloe painted lively little helpers, a broom that swept by itself, and a mop that danced across the floor. Within hours, the house was spotless, and her mum could relax with a book, a smile gracing her face. Seeing her dad struggle with the family car, that just wouldn't start. Chloe had an idea. Late in the evening, she sketched a bright and shiny engine. By the time the rooster crowed the next morning, the car was humming smoothly and her dad left for work with a whistle and a wave. And then there was Max, their playful golden retriever. One day, Chloe drew a scenic route with butterflies and meadows. As she painted, Max found himself on a magical walk, chasing after the colourful butterflies and rolling on the greenest of grass. When he returned, he was the happiest dog, his tail wagging with delight. Chloe embraced the magic that the paintbrush brought into her life. However, as days passed, she began to reflect on the things she once did without it. She remembered the joy of handing her dad tools as they both tinkered with the family car, chatting and bonding. She missed the moments when she would sing and dance with her mum as they cleaned the house, turning chores into fun sessions. And oh, how she longed for those simple, joyful times, playing fetch with Max, laughing as he clumsily chased the ball. These ordinary moments held a special kind of magic a warmth that even an enchanted paintbrush couldn't replicate. One evening, with a grateful heart and a happy sigh, Chloe climbed to the attic and gently placed the paintbrush back in its old wooden box. She realised that while magic is beautiful and exciting, the real enchantment lay in the everyday moments spent with those she loved. And so, dear listener, Chloe's journey reminds us that the most cherished memories often come from the simplest of times, where love and togetherness weave their own spell. Good night, little dreamer. May your dreams be filled with the magic of everyday moments, reminding you of the beauty that surrounds you each day.
Once upon a time, as autumn leaves painted the ground in hues of amber and crimson, a little lizard named Fred was frolicking among the fallen leaves. Suddenly, a paper brushed against his face. It was a tattered treasure map with a distinct cross marking a spot. Fred's eyes sparkled with excitement. It's a real treasure map, he declared, unable to contain his enthusiasm. Rushing to his friends, he shared the discovery. But they just chuckled. A treasure map, Fred? Really? Despite their doubts, they decided to humour him and followed the path led by the ever-energetic Fred. Through thick woods, across bowling streams, and up a steep cliff, the journey took them to places they'd never seen before. At the top of the cliff, they looked around, but there was no cross to be found. Fred's friends couldn't help but tease, Told you, Fred, there's no treasure here. Feeling dejected and foolish, Fred, in frustration, tossed the map off the cliff. However, as the map floated downward, Fred caught a glimpse of something unusual. The map landed on a huge stone, shaped unmistakably like a cross. It looked like the stone had broken off the cliff long ago. Without wasting a moment, Fred carefully made his way down. As he approached the cross, he met an elderly lizard named Maureen. She looked at the map and let out a heartwarming chuckle. <laughs> Oh my dear, she said, where did you find this? Listening to Fred's story, Maureen smiled nostalgically. She explained that her late husband had crafted this map for her when they were young. The treasure was not gold or jewels, but this very spot. From where they watched countless sunsets, lost in each other's company. The view, the colours of the sky, the serenity, it was their special place. Maureen had returned every day, cherishing those moments. Fred, realising the true value of the treasure, joined Maureen. They both sat atop the cliff, watching the sunset. The sky painted in shades of gold and purple, with the gentle autumn breeze carrying whispers of bygone times. And so, dear listener, Fred discovered that treasures are not always about gold or silver. Sometimes, the real treasure is a moment, a memory, or simply a beautiful sunset shared with someone special. Good night, little dreamer. As you drift into slumber, remember that life's truest riches are the moments and memories we create with those around us. Once upon a time, 
in a cosy home that echoed with laughter and love lived a boy named Daniel. <laughs> Daniel was cheeky and had a particular talent for bending the truth when it suited him. One sunny morning, he caught sight of his sister pouring a bubbling pink drink. It's an honesty potion, she warned. One sip and you'll be spilling truths all day. Unable to quell his curiosity, Daniel sneakily took a sip when she wasn't looking and thus began one of the most memorable days of his life. At breakfast, when his mum served pancakes and inquired, Do you like them? Daniel replied, They're a bit burnt today. His mum blinked in surprise, not used to such frankness. On his way to school, Daniel bumped into Mrs Thompson, the neighbour. She wore a large, colourful hat and asked, Doesn't it look fancy? To which Daniel, without a pause, responded, It looks like a bird's nest, but it's unique. Mrs Thompson chuckled, appreciating his candidness. At school, during show and sell, Sarah presented a painting of a cat. The teacher, trying to be encouraging, said, Isn't it wonderful? Before Daniel could stop himself, he said, It looks more like a potato with whiskers. The classroom erupted in laughter, and even Sarah couldn't help but giggle. During lunch, Daniel's friend asked him about the rumours of him having a crush on Lily. Flustered, he confessed, Yeah, I, I think she has the prettiest smile. His friends cheered, and word got around so fast that by the end of lunch, Lily was smiling that pretty smile right at Daniel. But the day wasn't over. At soccer practice, the coach asked, who thinks they should be captain? Daniel raised his hand. Honestly, I think Mia should be. She's the best player. Mia blushed and thanked him, and even the coach nodded in agreement. After the day's series of humorous truths, Daniel returned home to find his sister giggling. <laughs> She finally revealed, it wasn't an honesty potion, it was just pink lemonade. <laughs> Daniel was baffled, but also enlightened. Dinner was an eventful affair, with his family teasing and applauding him for his newfound candidness. They shared many laughs over the day's antics, and Daniel felt a warmth realising that honesty brought them closer. And so, dear listener, from a simple glass of pink lemonade, Daniel learned the refreshing power of honesty. It might be funny, surprising, or sometimes embarrassing, but it always feels right. Good night, little dreamer. As the stars twinkle outside, may you always find the courage to speak your truth and the joy in the genuine moments it brings. Once upon a time, in the vast expanse of the cosmos, there was a tiny star named Stella. While the other stars shone bright 
and big. Stella was just a little spark in the sky. Most stars had their fixed spots shining down on planets, being admired by creatures from galaxies afar. But Stella, she floated, lost, feeling overshadowed by the dazzling stars around her. They had planets revolving around them, comets racing past them. Stella felt quite ordinary. One day, a comet came whizzing past. Where are you headed in such a hurry? asked Stella. To the other end of the universe, Comet replied. There's a dark corner there. No star has ever ventured far enough to light it up. It's said to be a place of eternal night. Stella's heart raced. Here was her chance to shine and make a difference. I want to light up that corner, she declared. The comet warned her. It's not easy, little star. The path is fraught with black holes, rogue planets and space storms. And once you get there, you'll be all alone. But Stella was determined. With Comet as her guide, she embarked on her journey. They dodged black holes, which tried to swallow them whole. They danced around rogue planets that tried to deter their path. And when they encountered space storms, Stella shimmered even brighter, leading the way. After what seemed like a millennium, they reached the dark corner, and it was darker than they had imagined. The silence was eerie, and the vastness was intimidating. But Stella took a deep breath, and with all her might, she began to shine. Slowly, but steadily, her light pierced through the inky blackness. Her glow illuminated space, revealing hidden galaxies and ancient constellations. It wasn't long before the once dark corner was as radiant as the rest of the universe. Comet, seeing the transformation, said, you might be small, Stella, but your bravery and shine are unparalleled. Stella smiled, realizing that it wasn't about being the biggest or the brightest. It was about shining in your unique way, no matter where you are. And so, dear listener, Stella's tale reminds us that bravery is not about size or strength. It's about the courage to face the unknown, to stand alone and to shine from within. Good night, little dreamer. As you drift off into dreams, may you find your own unique shine and the bravery to light up even the darkest corners of the world. Once upon a time, in a town where every house had a garden bursting with colours, lived Poppy and Daisy, two best friends 
whose giggles were more contagious than the town's annual flu, and whose adventures were the favourite tales at the town's bedtime. Their unique bond was symbolised by two shimmering bracelets, gifts from an old woman they had helped at the town's annual fair. She had whispered, these bracelets are charmed. As long as you wear them together, every day will be a delightful adventure. And she wasn't wrong. When Poppy and Daisy came together, their bracelets glowed and magic unfolded. If they wished for snow in summer, snowflakes danced around them. If they felt like seeing the night during the day, stars twinkled in broad daylight. One day, they decided to create an indoor rainforest. As they held hands, their living room transformed. Exotic birds chirped from the couch, and a little stream ran under the coffee table. They spent hours chatting with parrots and playing with the water, laughing to their heart's content. However, one summer day, while chasing a particularly elusive butterfly through a thicket, Daisy's bracelet snagged on a thorn and snapped. The luminous glow dimmed, and the vibrant world they were in seemed to pause. The flowers drooped, and the melodies halted. <gasps> I think, I think the magic's gone, Daisy whispered, crestfallen, holding the two pieces of her bracelet. Poppy hugged Daisy. Let's not jump to conclusions. The next day, Poppy invited Daisy to the town's park. They sat on a swing, reminiscing about their playful adventures. Slowly, they began to hum their favourite tune, then sing, and then dance. The world around them responded. Birds sang along, flowers swayed to their rhythm, and a gentle breeze carried their laughter throughout the park. The magic was still there, as vibrant as ever. After several such magical days without the bracelet, it became clear to the two friends. The magic didn't come from the bracelets, but from their bond. Their shared laughter, dreams and love for each other turned everyday moments into adventures. And so, dear listener, Poppy and Daisy's tale teaches us that genuine bonds, love and friendship are the true magic. External charms might break or fade, but the enchantment of heartfelt connections lasts forever. Good night, little dreamer. As you drift into dreams, remember the magic that you carry within and the bonds that make your world enchanting. Once upon a time, in a picturesque home, surrounded by old oaks and blooming flowers, siblings Timmy and Lila spent the days in playful harmony. Timmy's newest fascination was Rollo, a petite robot with bright 
LED eyes. The two embarked on countless adventures, from exploring uncharted territories under the bed, to being astronauts in the living room. But as days flew by, new toys and games lured Timmy's attention. Soon Rolo was left abandoned on a garden bench. Weeks rolled on. Rain painted Rolo with mud, and the cold made his circuits shiver. One day, Lila, with her heart as expansive as the sky, decided to rescue the forsaken robot. Cleaning him gently and ensuring he was dry, she had an idea. She placed Rolo in her cherished doll's house, inherited from her grandma. In this grand mansion, Rolo's days transformed. With Miss Rose, he'd attend royal balls, waltzing around the doll's house's grand hall. With Mr. Green, he'd be a detective, solving mysteries of missing doll hats or shoes. The house echoed with tales of Rolo saving the day, travelling through time portals in the study, or finding hidden treasures in the attic. From the corner of his room, Timmy often heard peals of laughter as Lila played with Rolo. Curiosity peaked. He peeked to see Rolo, now a knight, defending the doll's house from dragon plushies, or at times an artist painting portraits of the dolls. A twinge of jealousy gnawed at Timmy. He missed Rolo's blinking lights and the fun they used to have. One evening, he approached Lila, hoping to play with Rolo again. But as he watched Lila weave stories with Rolo as the centerpiece, he realized the joy Rolo now had and the happiness brought to his sister. Instead of reclaiming Rolo, Timmy joined in. Together, the siblings created even grander tales. The doll's house became a hub of magic, laughter and shared memories. And so, dear listener, this story of Rolo isn't just about a robot's new life. It's a tale of sibling love, understanding, and the boundless worlds our imagination can conjure. Good night, little dreamer. May you too find joy in the simplest of things and weave tales that warm the heart. Remember, magic isn't just in toys, but in the bonds we share. Once upon a time, in the shimmering expanse of Antarctica, Percy, a bright-eyed penguin, lived amidst the icebergs and snowy terrains. While his penguin pals enjoyed belly slides and chilly dives, Percy's dreams were painted with sun rays and warm beaches. One icy morning, while fishing, Percy spotted something colourful floating on the water. It was a brochure, 
alluringly titled The Tropical Island Retreat. Pictures of sandy shores, turquoise waters and tall dancing palm trees filled the pages. His heart fluttered with excitement. Could a penguin like me really feel the sun and get a tan? He wondered aloud. Decision made, Percy began his preparations. He packed a suitcase. Inside were oversized sunglasses, a floppy sun hat, the highest SPF sunscreen he could find, and a little guidebook on tropical fruits. After a long adventurous journey, Percy finally set his webbed feet on the warm sands of the island. The bright sun made him squint and the salty air ruffled his sleek feathers. His first attempt at sunbathing was a spectacle for the island inhabitants. With a dab of sunscreen on his beak, lying under a palm tree with shades on, Percy was a sight to behold. Days turned into weeks and his once black feathers lightened, getting a sun-kissed hue. But Percy didn't just sunbathe. He tried fruit cocktails, learning to love the tangy taste of pineapples and the sweetness of mangoes. He took dance lessons from the flamingos and even attempted to climb trees with the mischievous monkeys, though that usually ended with him sliding back down. One day he met Luna, a wise old turtle. She shared stories of ancient oceans and the wonders of moonlit seas. In return, Percy spoke of his icy homeland. Luna, fascinated, said, Every place has its own magic, young one. As days turned to nights and stars replaced the sun, Percy felt a pang of homesickness. The town was lovely, the friends were unforgettable, but his heart yearned for the frosty embrace of Antarctica. So, bidding a bittersweet farewell, Percy returned to his homeland, his turn making him quite the celebrity. His tales of sunlit adventures and tropical dances enthralled all, especially the young penguins who listened with wide-eyed wonder. And so, dear listener, Percy's tropical escapade teaches us that while chasing dreams is a journey worth taking, the warmth of home remains unparalleled. Good night, little dreamer. Let your dreams be filled with both distant lands and the cosy corners of home. May you always find joy in every step of your journey. Once upon a time, in a dense green forest, Baggy the Badger was industriously preparing for the long winter months. Every day he'd venture out collecting berries, nuts and roots, storing them in his snug burrow beneath the trees. 
Baggy had a friend named Bailey, another sprightly badger with an endless love for parties and frolicking. Whenever Baggy invited her for a day of foraging, Bailey would chuckle. Why worry about winter now? Come and dance tonight, Baggy. As autumn painted the leaves golden and crimson, the forest buzzed with parties. Crickets played their tunes, fireflies lit up the dance floor, and Bailey was the life of every gathering. But amidst the revelry, Bailey didn't spare a thought for the upcoming cold months. The first snowflake fell, signalling the start of winter. While Baggy cosied up in his burrow, surrounded by stacks of food, Bailey found herself in a dilemma. Her pantry was almost empty, with hardly any food to last her through hibernation. Hungry and shivering, Bailey remembered her diligent friend. Mustering her courage, she knocked on Baggy's door, explaining her foolishness. With a gentle smile, Baggy opened his storage and shared his food. It's essential to prepare in time, Bailey. While enjoying the present is wonderful, we must also think of the future. Touched by Baggy's kindness and understanding the depths of his words, Bailey nodded. You're right, Baggy. I lost sight of what was crucial. Next year, I promise not only to gather my own food, but to collect for both of us. Winter passed, and as the snow melted, the promise of a new beginning blossomed. The following autumn, both badgers worked side by side, ensuring that when the next winter came, both burrows were filled to the brim. And so, dear listener, Baggy and Bailey's story teaches us the importance of foresight and timely actions. But more importantly, it shows the strength of true friendship, where mistakes are forgiven and bonds only grow stronger. Good night, little dreamer. As you took yourself in, remember that it's always good to prepare for tomorrow. But it's the friends we have by our side that make every challenge easier. Once upon a time, in a town filled with laughter and play, lived Melody, a girl with a boundless curiosity. One morning, she discovered her mummy's favourite pair of shoes, elegant heels that shimmered in the sunlight. Slipping them on, Melody declared, Today, I'll be just like Mummy. Hoping to understand her mum's daily routine, Melody decided to follow her around. The day began in the kitchen, as her mum whisked eggs and toasted bread. Melody, wearing those shiny heels, tried to do the same. A few eggshells landed in the bowl, and some bread got a tad over toasted, but the duo laughed it off. Next, 
they moved to the garden. While Mummy pruned the roses and watered the daisies, Melody attempted to help. Occasionally, spraying water everywhere with the plants. The vibrant flowers, the buzzing bees, and their shared laughter made it a morning to remember. Inside, as Mummy dusted the shelves and vacuumed the floors, Melody, with the oversized shoes, often tripping her up, did her best imitation. She hummed a tune, trying to turn chores into a dance, just like her mum did. Lunchtime was an adventure. With aprons on, they set out to make a meal. Melody stirred the pot a bit too vigorously, creating a splashy mess. But together, they managed a delightful, if somewhat unique, lunch. As the day wore on, Melody realised how exhaustive her mum's routine was. The sun began to set and Melody hadn't had a moment on her swing or a second with her dolls. When night fell, Melody, quite worn out, removed the heels and said, Mummy, your days are so busy. I thought wearing your shoes would be fun. But it's a lot of work. Her mum smiled, hugging Melody close. Being grown up has its challenges, my love. But seeing you try so hard made my day special. From that day, Melody started to help out a little more. Not by wearing the heels, but by doing small tasks. She realised that sharing chores meant more fun time for mummy. And so, dear listener, Melody's day in her mum's shoes taught her the beauty of teamwork and the joys of shared moments. While it's fun to pretend Every age has its own special magic. Good night, little dreamer. Cherish every moment, for in every task, big or small, there's a melody of memories waiting to be created. Once upon a time, in a bustling city called Metroville, there was a young boy named Geoffrey. Inspired by tales of mighty heroes saving the day, Geoffrey decided to become one himself. Thus, Super Geoffrey was born, ready to take on the world's challenges. Jeffrey's first attempt at heroism was trying to rescue Mrs. Thompson's cat from a tree. Instead of climbing gracefully, Super Jeffrey got stuck amidst the branches, needing Mrs. Thompson to call the fire department for a dual rescue. Next, Super Jeffrey thought he'd direct traffic during a busy parade, but instead of streamlined flow, there was a comical chaos of honks, with confetti making it look like a street party gone wild. The local traffic police had to intervene, guiding Jeffrey to the sidewalk with a chuckle. Determined, Super Jeffrey then decided to help 
at the local bakery. But by the end of the day, there was more flour on the floor and Super Jeffrey than in the bread. The bakers, trying to hide their amusement, thanked him and handed him a misshapen but delicious cookie. One day, after another noble yet misguided attempt at being a superhero, Jeffrey sat at the park feeling a bit downcast. That's when Lucy found him, munching on some sandwiches. Jeffrey, Lucy began gently, taking a seat next to him. I've watched you as a super Jeffrey, trying to do so many things, but do you know when you shine the most? When you're just being Jeffrey. Jeffrey looked up, puzzled. Lucy continued. Remember last winter? You didn't have a cape on when you gave your jacket to that shivering puppy. Or the time you spent hours cheering me up after I lost my pet fish. That's the Jeffrey the world needs. Hearing those words, Jeffrey took a moment to reflect. He remembered all those times, the warmth of simple moments, and the genuine smiles of those around him. With newfound clarity, Jeffrey responded, You know what, Lucy? Maybe I've been going about this all wrong. He decided to retire his superhero persona, but that didn't mean he stopped being helpful. Instead, Jeffrey embraced the little moments. He read stories to younger kids in the neighborhood, ensuring they were filled with wonder. He helped the elders, taking time to listen to their fascinating tales. And he even started a weekend club where kids could come and share their talents or learn new skills, turning every member into a little hero. And so, dear listener, the tale of Super Jeffrey reminds us that heroism doesn't always come from grand acts, but from the heart's genuine intent. It's not about the flashy capes or titles, but the kindness we spread daily. Good night, little dreamer. As you close your eyes, remember that every little act of love and care creates ripples of joy in the world. Dream of your own kind gestures, for they are the true superpowers we all possess. Once upon a time, on a sunlit farm, there was a little piglet named Percy. Now, Percy was no ordinary piglet. He was a roly-poly piglet. Whenever he saw a muddy puddle, he couldn't resist rolling and diving into it, splashing and laughing as the mud splattered everywhere. One particularly rainy day, the puddles grew into vast pools of muck, and Percy at the time of his life. He rolled, he dived and splashed so much that by the end he was covered in layers of squelchy, squishy mud from snout to tail. 
feeling content, Percy trotted back to the barn, ready for a nap. But as soon as he approached, a commotion arose. The other piglets, catching sight of him, began squealing in alarm. It's a smell monster, they cried. Percy tried to explain. It's me, Percy. But his voice was muffled by the thick mud and his face was hardly visible. The muck stank like a damp bog and his siblings all ran to their mother. Percy's mother, surprised by the commotion, squinted her eyes at Percy. If you're really Percy, then you need a long, hot wash. Well, if there was one thing Percy absolutely disliked the most, it was showers. Hesitant, Percy realised if taking a shower didn't prove he was Percy, nothing would. So, with a sigh, Percy walked towards the farm's outdoor shower, turned on the water and let the streams wash away the muck. The splash of water made him squeal, but he bravely stood still, slowly letting the mud clear, revealing the familiar pink face of Percy, much to the relief and amusement of the other piglets. Oh, Percy, it is you, they laughed, realising their mistake. Percy's mother laughed. Is this what it takes to get you to take a shower, Percy? From that day on, Percy learned the value of cleanliness. While he still loved his muddy dives, he made sure to wash up afterwards, ensuring he never got mistaken for a smelly monster again. And so, dear listener, the playful tale of Percy teaches us the importance of balance and hygiene. It's okay to have fun and get messy, but it's also essential to clean up afterwards. Good night, little dreamer. As you snuggle in, imagine a world where you can play to your heart's content. But remember to always come back home fresh and tidy. <laughs>